So usually when people play a two, five, one, they'll do something like this, you know, two, five, one. But I like to go two, five, one. Follow it up with a minor two five one minor two five one. That's a D minor eleven. G thirteen sus four. That's a C at nine. So how do you play a C at nine? So imagine just like a C bar chord, like one of those regular schmegular everyday. C bar chords, right? Okay, just play a regular C bar chord. So how do you play it? So imagine an E major shape and then move it up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frets, and then bar with your index finger on the eighth fret. That's a C major, right? So to play the C add nine, you're gonna take your pinky and move it up two frets. And that's a C at nine. So I really like this chord because it sounds like the gates of heaven opening up. C add nine. Why is it C add nine? Because it's root fifth ninth third fifth and root. So if it were to be C major nine, then there would be a major seven in it. So C add nine is one three five nine. C major nine is one three five seven nine. So that's the difference between C add nine and C major nine. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed that clip from one of Melanie Faye's live stream lessons on YouTube a few days ago. If you wanna learn more about Melanie Faye and her really innovative guitar playing, links in the description. And it was cool to see how she just took a normal two, five, one, D minor seven, G seven, C major seven, and gave it those vibes. So I took that little clip and gave it the fret live animation so you could kind of see the context, see those shapes in action. And I just wanted to walk you through some of the things that she showed us there. So in any key, in this case the key of C, we have seven chords, C being one, or C major seven, D minor seven being two, or D minor, E minor seven, or just E minor being three, F major, or F major seven being four, G major, or G7 being five, A minor being six, B half diminished being seven, and back to C. So in jazz music and even pop music and R&B and neo soul, a two, five, one is a really popular progression. You know, two, five, one, to go two, five, one. So what she did here is she played this beautiful sus chord, but used the third as an embellishment from the two to the three, two to the minor third, right? Then here, What's awesome is that she recycles this kind of thing in different contexts. So you'll see her do that over, say, a D minor chord, which would be a D minor 9. Or you might see her play this as an F major 7 chord, as if this was the root. And here she's using it as a G, as like a kind of G7 substitution. So 
So that's awesome. So many of my favorite players are really pragmatic that way. Like they can use uh, a limited vocabulary or, or just stylistic things that are really uh, deeply ingrained in their personal vocabulary in different contexts and situations. So this is an example of that, which is so cool. And then throughout, she's playing the chords finger style, right? So thumb, index, middle, ring. Just kind of pulling at the strings, right? Five. And there, I can't play it quite like her. What she does is she uses her pinky to do it. It's like a quick hammer on, on the high E string, and then a slide, and then a slide up, back, and a pull off. And then she doesn't pick any more, so she goes, just relies on hammer-ons and pull-offs. I'm sorry, so she does actually pick twice on the high E string, but then she just hammers on and slides with her pinky on the B string. I find it easier to go pinky, third finger, pull, pinky, third finger. <laughs> as opposed to something to experiment with. And being it's a sus chord, that just means there's no third in this chord. Now, if there was a third, say this note right here, you could play that too. And then that would just be a B13. There would be no sus in it, but we would have the 11th and the 13th, 11th here, 13th here. She ends on that note. And then this doozy. One. Now what's amazing is she's doing this all with overgrown nails on her left hand. She said in the live stream she had to cut her nails, but this chord I find so <laughs> hard. Like I really have to, it's really hard for me to play standing up. I need to really get the guitar up to do it. But I find that this chord's like a great stretching chord. You might want to try, if it's really hard there, try it higher first. And then gradually bring it down and see how low you could go with it. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so then she does a 2-5-1 to the 6 chord. So if we're in C major, a minor is six, right? One, seven, six. So the two of A minor is the B half diminished, still diatonic to the key. Then I'll follow it up with a minor two, five, one. Minor two. Five. One. Then I'll follow it up with a minor two, five, one. Minor two. makes it a B minor 11 flat 5 and minor 7 flat 5 is a synonym for half diminished what we have here is a diminished triad with a minor 7th again using those fingers almost like a piano player doo, 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 doo. then we go to this E7 sharp 9 so when we're in A minor instead of C we'll take that E minor which is the diatonic chord in the key and make it an E7 so we're just making the third of that chord major because that creates a half step pull back to the root of A. So we take that G and make it a G sharp, which makes it resolve nicely to the A. So you'll see it's E7 instead of E minor. Sharp nine's a great chord. This chord in particular, E7 sharp nine. 
Hendrix chord, especially on an E. Right? And then that signature melody, Felix. Still working on that. I feel like the only way to get it is if your hammer-ons are super accurate and you have to keep this first finger totally barred. But she does move her hand for the... But after the... That's it. In, pick, in the picking department. No more picks. I also think you have to like have a really light touch to make it happen. Like if you watch her touch, it's so light. So play the chord, then hammer. Slide, slide back, pull, hammer, pull, hammer, pull, hammer, pull, hammer, pull. Okay, then from there. That's a D minor 11. G13 sus 4. That's a C at 9. might have been a little confusing if it's new to you we do a secondary dominant we're gonna lead back to this two of C the D minor this D minor we're gonna lead back to that chord by making the A major or dominant uh, which which leads up by making this A minor an A major we get this that gravity back to the root of the D minor chord. So we take that A minor and she goes and what we have there then is the root and major third of A and then we just walk it up so starting with this root major third B root minor third then when we get to the C sharp, again root minor third, and then the flat five. And this kind of acts this is a five chord, the same way that this chord acts. Works the same way as an A7, a C sharp, half diminished. And the reason is because it's the same chord as an A9. So if I played an A9, here we have A, C sharp, E, G, B. And here we have C sharp, B, E, G. Same notes. So it's, it's a substitute for that chord. Or So that means anytime you want to resolve to a chord, let's say you want to resolve to C, you could just play a half diminished one step down because it's the same as that chord which is G9 that's a D minor 11 G13 sus 4 that's a C at 9 So then from there, we've got that cool common tone, very jazzy.
then here again, and then back to the C add nine. And I like what she was doing there. And of course having some whammy. slow because I can. <laughs> then we got the all right everybody I hope you enjoyed that lesson if you want to see more lessons like this please subscribe if you want to learn more about Melanie Fay and her really innovative guitar playing links in the description. If you want to see lessons for similar artists like Tom Mish, FKJ, I'll also link to those in the description. If you want to support the free lessons on this channel, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash palmusic, where you'll get tab and supporting resources for most of my lessons, worksheets, backing tracks, courses, and live weekly face-to-face -face small group lessons where I could give you extra help on anything you're working on, Pal music related or not. All right, everybody, happy playing, and I'll see you next time. Before I go, I just want to say thank you so much to Trampus Thompson, Michael Varney, Arwen Guzen, Joff Weathermax, and Cam Chernichon. Thank you for your ongoing support at patreon.com slash palmusic. <laughs>